This is the next page in the class handouts. I've reproduced the entire page, so I realize it's a little bit hard to read, but that's not going to be a problem. You can you can print it out and and uh, and study it uh, when you're not looking at the the video. What I've written here is type two. So this entire page is type two. And the cases are, I'll write them because they're a little hard to see, A, B, C, and D. So type 2 behavior in the short run, and then A, B, C, and D in the long run. Start out with graph 1. That's the type 2 cross-section of the production function, which gives rise to 2, average product and marginal product, 3, very, uh, sh uh, sh short run total cost and short run variable cost, and four, which is the short run average total cost, short run average variable cost, and short run marginal cost. So all those we've studied before. And then the graphs five, seven, nine, and eleven, I've drawn the appropriate long run total cost for A, long run total cost for B, long run total cost for C, and long run total cost for D. And then one example short run total cost curve. Here, uh, graph number two, I did two short run total cost curves to show how those short run total costs could generate the long run total costs. Then in six, eight, ten, and twelve, I had the long run averages and the long run marginals. We s studied the type one averages and marginals quite carefully in the previous two lessons. These are almost exactly the same. In fact, I'm going to pause for a moment to see if you can figure out what the only difference is between 6, 8, 10, and 12 here and 6, 8, 10, and 12 and type 1. Okay, well, I suggest you pause the video if you want to think about this some more. I'll tell you what the answer is. The answer is that here, short run marginal cost is u-shaped and so you have a little hook at the beginning of all the short run marginal cost curves and that hook didn't exist in the short run marginal cost curves and that hook didn't exist in the previous page that's a pretty minor point it's it's true it's it's the way you distinguish between type 1 and type 2 when you're looking at marginal costs. Otherwise, 6, 8, 10, and 12 are the same as 6, 8, 10, and 12 in type 1. And so the careful analysis that we did for type 1 simply results in the same kind of conclusions for type 2. So there's nothing particularly new to say. And this forms the end of the chapter on costs.